Hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world, I am Jay Campbell, and you are watching the Jay Campbell Podcast, and I'm very excited to be joined today in my virtual StreamYard studio with Carly Hayes of, um, I'm sorry, uh, the, the lead nutrition manager at NutriSense. Carly, how are you? I'm doing wonderful. How are you today? Uh, it's my birthday, so I'm having an absolutely amazing day. Um my daughters ambushed me before I was to come on this podcast, so I'm a little out of sorts, but it's all good. Um, so let me give you guys Carly's uh, bio. She is a registered dietitian and nutritionist and the lead nutrition manager at NutriSense, which is a metabolic health company utilizing continuous glucose monitoring. A lot of people are using the glucose monitors now. You know, Everywhere I go, I see guys in the gyms and stuff like that with their wearing theirs and stuff like that. But obviously, continuous glucose monitoring is a technology that provides real-time data to clients on their insulin uh, and their glucose, their blood sugar, all that kind of stuff. Uh, she, Carly is an original founder of NutriSense, and she helped the company grow from two dietitians to a team of probably more, much more than 20 now within the first year. She's an alumnus of Western Illinois University, and she's able to incorporate her dietetics degree into specializing in bariatric nutrition therapy and weight loss. So welcome to the show. Um, I have your... Uh, monitor that you guys sent me literally probably six or seven months ago. And I still, to this day, I'm just such a busy cat traveling and stuff like that, that I've never, ever even used it. So, you know, shame on me. I mean, I'm obviously extremely meticulous with my diet and my nutrition and the way I supplement and stuff like that. And I keep below 10% body fat year round. So not as important to me as someone who's also trying to lose weight and, you know, really understand their blood sugar, uh, what causes spikes, what doesn't. But, uh, you know, just to, before we jump into the topics, you know, just talk about like the evolution of glucose monitoring. Yeah. Well, first and foremost, happy birthday. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, to join you on your birthday. I feel, I feel very uh, honored, but um, I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you. Well, hopefully I'm going to make it my goal to inspire you to put that CGM on at some point. <laughs> my goal. I have so many people that tell me to do it. They're like, bro, you got to do it. I'm like, man, I've been like living this lifestyle for 20 years. Like my yeah. diet is so clean. I fast every other day. Like, I don't really know how it's going to do much for me, but if you can convince me to do it, I will. And if I can convince you, I've done it my, I've done my job, but uh, okay. yeah. So, as you mentioned, continuous glucose monitoring has come a long way yeah. and it's still a fairly new technology, but it's just everywhere now. Like I'm with you. I see people at the gym wearing them and I just get really excited because what it is, right? A continuous glucose monitor, you're continuously, continuously monitoring your glucose. And it's just this little, I always call it an easy button. I have one on right now. Sure. Uh, people yep. can see, but yep. you just insert it into your arm in the back of your arm, kind of the fattiest part so that you're into that interstitial fluid. So you just like, I think everyone's really familiar with a finger prick device, right? You know, someone that maybe monitors their blood sugar and has to dose their insulin or, or whatever it is. Usually they're associated with individuals with diabetes. Right. Um, and this, in contrast, you're not pricking more than once a day. You just insert it one time into that interstitial fluid, which is the fluid around your cells, and it monitors your glucose 24 hours a day, every single day for 14 days. So and, and by the way, this is all done on an app, obviously, for yeah. the audience, correct? Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, if you're using NutriSense, which is where I'm using mine, of course, that's my company. Um, then we have the NutriSense app and you just scan that sensor at least once every eight hours. So it can hold up to eight hours of data at a time. And then you're able to see your data in real time on your screen um, and just kind of see how your body is responding to all the different factors of your lifestyle. So your diet, your exercise, stress, sleep, every single thing that you're doing on a regular basis, you're able to see how that affects your daily metabolic health through that glucose monitoring. So um, as you can imagine, these were typically only prescribed for individuals with diabetes. So typically mm -hmm. like type one diabetes or maybe poorly controlled type two diabetes. And still to this day in the United States, they are a prescription device. So you have to have a prescription to get them. In Canada and some other places, you can get them over the counter, anyone can get them. Um, but they do require a prescription here and they're just kind of hard to get if you don't have mm -hmm. diabetes. So we're trying to eliminate that red tape around it and provide this really meaningful data for anyone that wants to achieve their health potential. 
So how are you guys able to sell the devices if they're prescription only? Yeah. So anyone that fills out our health questionnaire, so you go to our website, you um, decide which plan that you want to get, whether it's just one month you want to do, which was what I would recommend for someone that's really healthy like you and you just want to experiment. Or maybe like you mentioned, if you have a bigger weight loss goal or something like a larger goal that you're struggling with, you might do a longer plan. Um, you fill out your information. So we take um, into account your age, you know, your health history um, and all that stuff. And if you are approved for the program, then we have a team of providers that provides that prescription for you so that you're able to get that delivered to your house. So who wouldn't be, I, I got to ask these questions, right? Cause this is what people yeah. are going to ask anyway, but like who wouldn't be approved? Yeah, that's a great question. And for now, one thing that we're, we're specializing, specializing in preventative health. So anyone that is on insulin or wants to use these devices to manage or titrate their insulin doses, those aren't approved for our program right now, but those are the type of people that can typically get those prescribed from their doctor. Um, we also don't take anyone less than 18 years of age just because it hasn't really been studied or approved in kids at this time. Um, and then just from our um program perspective. We don't take anyone with an active eating disorder because that that data can be really harmful if you already have a fear or a disordered relationship with food. Um, and then aside from that, the device also hasn't been approved for use in pregnant women in the United States, which kind of stinks because I think it could be really right. helpful for women. But um, until that's approved, those are the those are the ones that we can't accept at this time. I mean, I would actually say that that would be almost like critically important to have um, for women, because again, there's so many issues that happen when women are pregnant, uh, you know, from thyroid dysfunction to, you know, gestational diabetes. Right. You know, I was one of nine children, the oldest of nine children. My mom actually gave birth to 10. So I'm like extremely familiar with like the birthing process and culture around oh having kids God. and stuff like that. So, and then, you know, just with my understanding and awareness of nutrition and insulin and sensitivities and all those things. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I'm with you. I, that, that, you know, again, but the system is always way behind like the people that are on the out, you know, the tip of the spear of the biohacking community. But so that's cool. So it sounds like really very, it's, um, it's very open, you know, you, you don't limit it to that many people. Obviously there are certain situations and circumstances, but it's cool. So most people in the States can get it. Um, so the process, before I get into your talking points of like, you know, they fill out the questionnaire, uh, you guys have an approval process or whatever that I take, I would assume takes a couple business days and then what? You send them an email and say, you're approved and now you set up a plan. Is that how it works? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So you sign up for your plan, submit payment, we review your health questionnaire, you're approved for the program. And then usually within a couple of days, we send out your CGMs and then you get access to our app. So you can right. download it from the app store, pull it up on your phone and kind of just start exploring. We have a lot of education pieces in there and other things that you can explore until your CGM arrives. And then once you get your CGM in the mail, you apply it, which is always kind of a scary part, I think, for some people because there is a large needle involved. Um, I've had to walk a lot of people through that application. But the one thing to remember is that it's not painful. So for 90% of people, you really don't even feel it. Right. Um, sometimes people with lower body fat, so when you said less than 10% body fat, yeah. It might sting a little bit, right? Just because you don't have a whole lot of that fat there to kind of take that that brunt of that pain. But right. um, for me, I never feel it. Yeah. Um, and then you're only doing it once. So right. the cool thing about our program and what I do is that I'm the dietitian. So this is a lot of data. As you can imagine, looking at glucose data or any health metric when you're first starting out can be kind of overwhelming. You don't know what to focus on, right. where you right. should go with it. And that's really where I come in. So I'm that personal dietitian. As soon as you activate your sensor, within about 24 hours, your dietitian reaches out, helps kind of set some goals and give you some basics about the sensor and what to look for. And then you have that person with you, that same human for 30 days. So that full month after you start your first sensor. So two full sensors to help you understand that data and really get the most out of it to know what's going to help you reach whatever goal that you have. Yeah. So a couple of comments on that. So, um, you know, being in the testosterone world, like I have been for a long time and working with, you know, thousands of physicians, literally and figuratively, uh, because it's a needle and it's invasive, yeah. uh, you will act. That's a massive barrier of entry. I, I know it sounds ridiculous because you're right. I mean, I've injected myself thousands of times with like microdermic microscopic hypodermic needles 
I've injected myself with par- harpoons, as I call them, like 18 gauge, you know, drawing needles. I mean, I've done it all in my 25 years or tw- I'm sorry, 22 years in this world. Um, but it's crazy how fearful people are of needles. And I'll say it to everybody that's out there. The first time you do it, you will never be fearful again. But it's like overcoming that first time of like, oh my God, I have to inject myself with a needle. You know, like I have a story when I, my first testosterone injection when I was 30 or 31, I don't remember. And I was just sitting there looking at the needle and looking at my leg and looking at the needle. I sat there for two hours and my wife at the time, who's now, you know, Russ, she, she's no longer my wife, but you know, she's doing great. Shout outs to Kelly. She walked up to me and she's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I can't inject myself. And she's like, really? And she went, bam, <laughs> she went and injected my leg and said, are you sure? And I'm like, I'm looking at it and I'm looking at her. I'm like, wow. It didn't even hurt. <laughs> oh my God. So that's a true story, but you, there's thousands of stories out there from people who cannot inject themselves, who have stories like that. But it's like, you know, again, in my lectures, I tell people it's like brushing your teeth, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I don't blame people. It looks really scary. When you're looking at this needle, it looks scary. It's hard to fathom that that won't hurt or that you won't feel it. So it's almost like any fear. It's not really based in facts, right? You're kind of just building it up. Everything is psychological. Yes. 100%. I've been on so many calls with doctors that have definitely given people injections that I have to walk through and they're literally physically shaking, trying to put this in. And then they put it in and they're like, wait, that's it. You know, I think it's always this big shock that that's it. Because when I go to the doctor, when you get your finger prick, that does hurt. That stings. But this is a completely different experience. It's just like you mentioned, you have to kind of get through it the first time or have someone that can do it for you. And then you're good to go. Well, I mean, I'm telling you, it's just crazy how people are. I mean, you know, uh, again, I have conversations with docs all the time and they laugh um, about, you know, grown men you know, who are literally so afraid of injecting themselves with a needle that they come into the doctor's office and close their eyes and look the other way to let the nurse inject them and, and, you know, pay extra money for this nonsense when they can have this shit sent to their house and inject themselves. I mean, it's insane. All right, let's get to some more (laughs) of your bullet points, actually. Um, And you kind of already talked about it, but, you know, I love the idea where we're going, you know, is again, in what I call optimization healthcare of like analyzing through the power of, uh, you know, the AI and big data and machine learning, like, you know, all of these different metrics from, you know, thousands, if not, you know, tens of, and sometimes up to hundreds of thousands of end users. So can you kind of talk a little bit about that as you guys now have kind of amalgamated your data because you've been in the marketplace now for what, almost two years? It's two years, right? A little over two years. So we started taking our first members in September of 2019. So a little bit yeah, over. So I, I, I know I told you this, but the first gal, and it wasn't you that reached out to me from you guys that sent me, you know, that we had a conversation and stuff like that. Um, I think it was in literally like middle of 2020. Or it might have oh, actually been, it might have been, the, it might have been the end of 2020. I don't even remember. Time is flying. But um, it's, it's, yeah, it's crazy. Um, but yeah, talk a little bit about that. You guys have a lot of data now, correct? Yeah, we have a ton, a ton of data. So I think what's really cool about the CGM is that you're able to get more of that. So we, you know, we talked about if you do a finger prick device, if you get one measure in your, in your finger, that's like a slip snapshot into your metabolic health. But the right. beauty of the CGM is that you get way more of those, right? It's kind of like this time lapse of your metabolic health. So instead of just seeing these little points in time that really don't help you put the full picture together, <coughs> excuse you're me, able to see all of those trends that we're looking for. So when we start to really assess glucose data, and I guess I should start with like why glucose is important. Is your um, audience familiar with that? Is that yes, worth very it? familiar with that, but you can but definitely explain it. There's always new people coming on. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I think just to put it briefly, you know, we do a lot of talking about metabolic health and what that actually means. And, you know, there's this statistic that gets thrown around that only 12% of Americans are metabolically healthy, which means they've usually got something wrong with or or something abnormal with their cholesterol, their glucose, their waist circumference, uh, or some other factors. You're being nice. Let me give it to you way harder. 70%. I just saw the stat of two days ago, 70%. Okay, if you can believe this, Carly, 70% of men and women over the age of 40 in North America are clinically obese. Obese! 
That is insane. You guys should build an empire. Now, anyway, go back. <laughs> We're working on it. We are. I mean, so you're right, right? Like, I think one thing that's really frustrating, this is why I got into this, is that a lot of times um, when we look at these chronic diseases that are related to obesity, like you mentioned, or they're related to uh, metabolic dysfunction, most of them are preventable. So there's Absolutely. been evidence that- of diabetes, 80% of cardiovascular disease, all of those lifestyle related conditions can be prevented or at least delayed by early lifestyle interventions. Right. You have to have the right tools. You have to have the right data to know which way you go. And I think in the nutrition world specifically, which has always been really frustrating for me, there's a lot of noise. Oh, you should follow this diet. You should follow this diet. No, this person's wrong. Pay attention to this person. And so it's no wonder people are feeling lost and they don't really feel like they have concrete answers to make actionable steps towards. So a couple things, a couple things on that. So yes, very well said. First off, the last two years have been an absolute abomination, a catastrophic decline in all causes of health, comorbidities, yeah. higher levels of mortality. I mean, clearly you create, you know, the scamdemic, the pandemic, it's a combination of both, whatever it is. Yes. COVID's real, but yes, people are dying. But the majority of people who died from COVID statistically factually proven had comorbidities were metabolically resistant or dysregulated or deranged, uh, were obese. You know, I could go on and on and on. So, you know, healthy people for the most part don't die of COVID, but as you and I just clearly proved, not everybody and not the majority is healthy, right? So you take that, you take that into consideration with the idea that yes, what you also said is very clear and true. And I'm glad you said it because very few people talk about it. The internet is a scam of scam of telling people bullshit. The average person under the age of 30 writing about nutrition. And again, I'm not calling out younger people, but you know, you're not a guru if you haven't been in this space for at least 10 to 20 years, you're not a guru. You don't understand anything about nutrition and all these younger people and older people who are lost, you know, who go online and find this first person who says, Oh, do this and do that with their diets. They don't understand. So I'll, I'll let you get back to it. But you know, I always say this and you know, this is part of my lecture at the biohacking Congress in a month. There is no best diet. There is no one size fits all approach for anybody. What you have to understand is to remain metabolically flexible, to understand your genetics, to understand your activity patterns, your movement patterns, your unique energy demand, and then around that remain metabolically flexible. So that means you may have to eat, you know, low carb one day, you might have to eat moderate to higher, you know, low glycemic carbs one day, you may actually want to do keto or you know, some form of a a fasted diet, you know, based on your performance standards or whatever it is. But again, people are so lost because like you said, the nonsense, the signal to noise ratio on the internet at this point is almost all noise. There's a very, very small signal. And if you're not already educated in nutrition, where are you going to go? I mean, you have absolutely no idea. You're wading through just the muck, right? Right. And I think another layer to add to that is that sometimes our traditional nutrition recommendations are a little bit behind where they should be. You mean like the food pyramid? (laughs) The food pyramid, uh, eat canola oil, like you you fill in the blank. Seed oils, yeah. Well, I mean, all you have to do is say this. Like I always tell people this, like uh, people, the RDA was written by the Kellogg family. Uh, Kellogg cereal, hello? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like, you have to be a critical thinker to know right. which way to go from that. And right, right. me, I was um, educated in all things nutrition. I'm supposed to be the nutrition expert, but I came out of it having more questions than I had answers. Of course. It wasn't for a critical mind and just kind of questioning every single thing that I'd learned and pushing myself to really find the truth. And I use quotations because there really is no truth, right? right? Like you said, there's no one right. size fits all diet that depends on right. the person, but I yeah. might still be in that box. And I think you have to think outside of the box and really experiment for yourself to know what's right for you. So I've worked with 
a lot of people that think a vegan diet is right for them, but when we test it, it isn't. No. Same thing right. with keto. A lot of people think that's the right diet, but we start to test and it just doesn't work for them. Right. And right. that's due to a lot of things, right? Your genetics, that makes up a big proportion of how you respond to foods. But there's been, as you know, some really interesting data coming out that your microbiome composition is very different than mine, meaning you might respond differently to certain foods that I can't tolerate, right? Exactly. So I think if you're trying to struggle through all of that nutrition noise that's out there right now, it's really challenging. And yeah. the CDM, putting that emphasis on curiosity and testing and seeing what's right for you and what actually works for your body cuts through all of that noise and can actually give you steps to take that might help improve your health span. And like you said, be metabolically flexible, be able to handle whatever nutrients you have available at that time. I love all of that. Um, you know, I always say this, you just said it and I'll say it in a different way. I mean, we're all biochemically unique. Every individual is different. You know, there's like inter-individuality and, you know, di differences in the way we process insulin, uh, the way we metabolize, uh, you know, fat, uh, the way we metabolize, uh, you know, protein and carbohydrates. I mean, everybody is different. There really is no, you know, one size fits all approach. So you're right. So, I mean, like, obviously being able to understand this data, um, as far as the way your body processes and handles, you know, nutrients and, you know, uh, deals with, uh, insulin partitioning and, and, and excretion and all that stuff is, you know, again, fascinating. So I got to ask you, and by the way, I just was looking while you were talking the app. I still have the app on your phone. My app is still on, your, on my, your app is on my phone. Sorry. We're getting closer. Uh, <laughs> so my question is then like, how does a person learn to interpret the data? I know you talked about it, but does the nurse or your assistant or whatever that you get this private assistant, do they coach you through this? Like, how, how do you understand this? Yeah, great question. And yes, so you are assigned this person for a full month for free. It kind of comes with the program. And then after that, if you want more help, like maybe you're just having trouble kind of working towards your goals, or you really like that second hand of accountability, you can pay for them to stay on with you. But what we do is we reach out pretty regularly. So no matter if you want to be reached out to frequently, so every couple of days or once a week, or you prefer to explore on your own, you have that kind of dietitian nutritionist in your pocket. So you can message us and we'll always respond within 24 hours with any questions that you have, which I think is really, really cool, yeah. especially with this type of data. But one thing that we always do is we try and break it down into three main trends. So we look at fasting glucose, we look at your meal responses or your postprandial glucose, and then we look at glycemic variability. So those are all metrics that we already have in the analytics page of the app. So if you prefer data and you kind of understand on your own, then you might be great. But if not, then we have that person, that human touch, that's an actual human being that talks you through those. So yeah. we're able to look at your data and say, hey, your fasting glucose is a little bit high here's what I'm seeing in what you're logging. So you log your meals, you log your habits, you log all of your exercise, all that good stuff. And we're looking at your health history to try and find the missing pieces of that puzzle, right? Are you eating too late at night? That can affect your fasting glucose. Are your meals really carb heavy in the evening? That can affect your fasting glucose. Do you not get any movement in throughout the day? You're not clearing that glycogen store. That could affect your fasting glucose. So we're trying to kind of work you through all of the factors and guide you towards the right things that are going to make the biggest impact. All and good so, stuff. Yeah. Well, how, yeah. Do you, well, how do you guys enter? So, so my question is, uh, so all this stuff is very, very um, understood by me, but I'm yeah. 0.0005%. So obviously, <laughs> you know, you have massive numbers of people that can benefit from this data. So how do you guys like integrate or interrelate or interact with like the physicians that some of these people. So I'll give you a, a, a good example and then you can kind of just tell me. So, you know, a lot of the people that follow me are working with doctors from a hormone optimization standpoint, right? Mm -hmm. They've got them on testosterone. If they're a woman, maybe oestrogen and um, uh, what's the stuff uh, my wife takes? I can't think of it right now. Progesterone, right? Yeah. And yep. then they're taking, uh, you know, uh, desiccated thyroid, maybe armor, NP thyroid or something like that for a little thyroid bump. And then, uh, you know, whatever else they may be taking to mimic or, or to, uh, to, to regulate their insulin, they may be taking metformin or dihydroberberin, you know, a lot of anti-aging stuff. 
how do you guys interface with that physician that that patient is working with to use this app? Because I can see that this is an amazing, amazing synergy. Yeah. Um, and definitely that's something that will like, if we feel like there's something maybe going on outside of glucose, nutrition, lifestyle, that's something we're always going to say, Hey, this is something that we should probably bring to your thyroid doctor or whoever's managing this condition for you. And what's cool about our app and about the data is that you can export it. You can share it with them. You can take screenshots. You can print our conversations. That way you're also helping that provider get more insight into kind of what's going on underneath the curtain, because that's what glucose is, right? It's our other vital sign. And it tells us how our metabolism is working, but unless we're not monitoring it, right, you can't really see that. So I think this provides really, really helpful tools um, our team is definitely, you know, nutrition focused, lifestyle focused. So we're going to be focusing on all those habits that you're doing every single day, which we know are kind of the foundation of all of those tenets of health. So we'll look at, you know, your nutrition, your exercise, sleep, stress, all those kind of pillars that hold up your metabolic health. But if it's outside of our, that realm, then that's something we'd say, hey, this is something let's bring up to your doctor. Here's what I would recommend touching on, but I would recommend sharing this data with them. And we've had really great success with that because it, again, puts more tools in that provider's yeah. hand. Well, that's, that's what I kind of mean. I did a poor job of explaining. It. I mean, do you guys have a way to like cr create PDFs or printouts that, you know, then send to the physician or whatever tracking? Because a lot of these guys at the advanced levels are, you know, creating diets and, you know, yeah. have workout programs and they have check-ins and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, do you guys like offer the ability through the app to print stuff out and send it to the doctor via email or, or uh, maybe a share or something? Yeah, I would say probably the easiest way we do um, export into a CSV, but you kind of have to be a data nerd to be able to yeah. manipulate that and to kind of make sense of it. But usually what I'll say is, hey, take this app to your doctor, uh, take screenshots of the app, send it to him, take screenshots of your analytics page and you can do averages. So it's not just one day you're looking at, you can look at it over a month. And if your you know, glycemic variability is a little higher than it needs to be, that's something you can tell your doctor that's trying to manage your um, whatever health yeah. hormone problem that you have right. going on. So there are ways to share it and just kind of make sure that your whole team is, is on the same page. Very cool. Um, so you have a couple other bullet points to just cover real quick here. Uh, the preventative health, how it helps prioritize preventative health measures. So I always speak, uh, when I'm talking to people about what, you know, cause a lot of people, when they start going down the path, they're like, I can't afford it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, or they say even better, like I can only afford my co-payment, you know, or whatever it is. And so I always say to people like, no, actually you need to invert your thought process because you can't afford not to, right? Because when you explain to them, you know, getting to 50 and having a heart attack or type two diabetes or a glaucoma or whatever, you know, again, because you've treated your body like a raging dumpster fire, that costs a hundred thousand dollars minimum out of pocket. I don't give a shit what your benefits are. See, again, most people, as my wife likes to say, don't value their health until they don't have their health. Okay. Yeah. And so they don't understand that the cost of having a major life adverse health event far outweighs the cost of preventative health measures. You know, again, what I call health optimization, you know, working on your functional strength and your uh, nutrition and your body, your, you know, your body composition and all that stuff. So it's like, you always have to like invert the mindset of the people who are thinking about, well, what is this going to cost me? It's like, well, what could it cost you if you don't? Right. Right. Yeah. And I think there's a really harsh saying, but I, I sometimes think of this all the time that you either pay for your wellness now or you pay for your illness later. That's and I absolutely, don't, I love that. I it's, it's harsh, but I think one thing people have to start knowing and, and believing is that you have the power in your hands. So we never right. want to wait for a diagnosis before right. you actually prioritize your health because that right. then it's costing you your time. It's costing you your health span, your quality of life. And not, that's not even money at all related, right? All of those things that really add up to your quality of life over time. And so yeah. the cool thing about glucose and the frustrating thing about sometimes our conventional health system is that we do a great job of identifying this is the problem. Here's how we treat it. We do a great job of that, but we don't do a great job of saying, hey, this is starting to trend a little bit higher. Right. Really focus on this before it gets to something that right. we need to address. And right. that's where... When you look at glucose, remember, this is a measure of our metabolic health. So we can start to see those warning signs really early. We often, I think 
mistakenly think that, you know, one day you're healthy and the next day you wake up and you're not. But really, these conditions take years, decades to develop. So there are warning signs along the way. A lot of times we're just missing those because we're looking at diagnostic criteria right. and not preventative right. optimal criteria. So what's cool about glucose is that, first of all, it's in real time. So you see it on your phone. You're not waiting for a number on you know, the weight scale to change. That can take time versus immediate satisfaction, immediate um, reinforcement of good behaviors yeah. on your phone. And I think that's really powerful. But the other thing I always like to touch on is that we keep glucose in this really tightly controlled range for homeostasis. Right. So it's controlled by what we're putting into our body, but our body also controls it as part of that homeostatic range, right? Yep. And so when we start to see glucose go a little bit too high, a little bit too low, or just be really, really unstable and spiky, as we call it, yeah. uh, that can be that early warning sign. So that's that little yellow flag, you know, your body's kind of waving saying, hey, I need I need some help here. But we're missing those signs because we're just not having access to that data. And what yeah. we found, right, I'm a very healthy person. I know a lot about health, but I found that there were certain foods that I thought were quote unquote yeah. healthy that were spiking my glucose to yeah. a range that was maybe causing inflammation, maybe, maybe causing oxidative damage, or yeah. maybe just causing me to have that glucose roller coaster throughout the day. So I was having cravings. I wasn't able to stay satisfied or full from my meals and I wasn't able to become metabolically flexible. Right. So I think anyone in the health space can, can have some benefit here because you're able to see those little tiny things that you can tweak to promote optimal health. So not just good, not just we're getting by right. optimal health so that you can live your best quality of life. I mean, it's all really, really well said. I mean, you know, for me, I've been literally fasting for 10 years, right? So like I, four days a week, I don't eat food. It's just the way it is, right? Like, so my insulin sensitivity, my blood glucose, my A1C is like floored, right? Like you cannot be from an inflammatory factor, you know, standpoint, you can't be healthier than I am. And plus I do all sorts of other shit. You know, yeah. I'm hormonally optimized. I sometimes use peptides. I sometimes use very low dose microdoses of growth hormone. I mean, I do everything that you could possibly do. But again, I'm like I said, the point zero 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 five. I mean, like you can like see when I eat carbs, which is every other day, uh, and I eat clean carbs. You know, I mean, I eat white rice. You know, sometimes I'll eat brown rice. Sometimes I'll, I always eat oatmeal in the morning. Um, mm -hmm. But like, if I did, if I did, I already know like my insulin is so controlled. And I also take two grams of metformin a day and have been for 20 years. Right. right? So yeah. I've, I've done the, uh, the biological testing, uh, with true diagnostic and I'm 20 and I'm 51 today. Right. Love so that. like, I know my cells and my bones and all the things that I've done again from my lifestyle are where it's at. That doesn't mean that I won't learn because I'm sure there are certain foods that definitely cause a spike that I probably don't even know. I mean, I kind of think that I do because I've eliminated most foods. I mean, I eat the most boring, monotonous, mundane diet ever. My wife said to me this morning, do you want a cake or apple pie? And I'm like, why the fuck would I eat a cake or apple pie? It's your birthday. You know, people are coming over. I'm like, I don't eat that shit. I feel like shit if I eat it. Right. So, but, but to your point, 90% of people, and I'm probably being nice. It's probably higher are yeah. literally talk, you know, food time bombs. They eat when they're hungry. They eat when they're emotionally charged or fired up. You know, they don't have a control system. They don't fast. I mean, so few people fast, you know, people think that not eating from seven until seven in the morning is fasting. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, that's not fasting. But I mean, again, there's so much misinformation out there and people tell people like, Oh, just don't, don't eat breakfast until nine or 10 AM. And you just fasted. Uh, no. If you're not reaching autophagy and hormesis, you're not fasting. But bottom line is to your point, like this is a highly valuable technology. I, I, I can see this so beneficial for so many people because again, people have no concept. They, they don't understand like what is healthy. You know, I, I mean, all the time I have people saying to me who are in who are attempting to fast, they're like, yeah, but bro, branch chain amino acids, you can take those when you're fasted. And I'm like, who the fuck said that? You know, because it's in the books. Is your goal? Yeah, it's in the books that it's it's just a perfect protein. Uh, a protein has four grams of carbon. I mean, uh, calories. It's an energy unit. Like, hello, you're not fasting. So, but I mean, again, the misinformation out there is so unbelievable. So, let me just ask you. Um, so, if people want to sign up, they watch this podcast. They're like, "Hey, man, I really want to get this. I want to find out about it." How would you tell them what's the best path to go? Right. Well, I think first 
visiting our website, reading more about us, following us on Instagram. I think I, of course, want people to sign up for our program. That's yeah. definitely a huge goal of mine because I believe in it and I'm so passionate for it. But I think just educating yourself on what's right. important, why it's important, what glucose is as a metric, that's a first goal. And yeah. then secondly, come see us, come talk to us, um, visit our website and just see the different programs we have available. So I think for someone that's really, really healthy, you don't probably need a whole long time with the CGM. You might be able to get some insights with just a month or two sensors of data. And that's really cool because with the first sensor, you can test your baseline and see how your normal habits are working to support your goals. And then the second sensor, you can optimize. So maybe it's just breaking your fast with a little bit more protein, or right. maybe extending that fasting window if you're trying to get into fasting. Yep. Some of those small little tweaks that we can do to really optimize your insulin sensitivity, and then just seeing the shape of your postprandial curves, right? How yep. are you responding to your current diet? And are there some little tweaks or swaps that we can do to optimize that in the future? And all those things, even if they seem really small, can add up to better quality of life could add up to feeling better, better energy throughout the day. I mean, I think that's one thing to, to note is that we all want to promote preventative health. That's huge, right? But that's not sexy. When you think about sexy, you think about how you're feeling day to day right. and glucose as our metabolic substrate tells us why or why not we're feeling great, right? So that's an immediate thing that you can get a lot of ben benefits from. So better energy, better fueling for your workouts, um, there's just limitless possibilities. You just have to sign up and, and see what you can learn because I truly believe everyone should do this at least once in their lifetime just to, just to know, um, and have that information and use it appropriately. Yeah. I want people to know I'm not against this at all. I, I just, like I said, it's somewhere, it's somewhere I was, I was hopeful that I could find it. Cause I know I have it somewhere here in my office, but I literally can't find it right now. And I have so yeah. many books piled up over on my bookshelf. So I apologize for that. I'm sorry again, cause it was my birthday today that I didn't have it better prepared. I mean, maybe I could have inserted it while I was on the show, you know, we could have like gone down that path, but Carly, I really appreciate you coming on today. You're a wealth of knowledge. Uh, I, I believe in this technology, you know, wholeheartedly. I know you guys are going to build an empire. You're one of what? There's only what two companies right now like you? Is that it? Couple. There's there's more popping up. So yeah, uh, good yeah. thing. Well, right? you guys are first in though. You guys are kind of first in, right? So first yeah. in, first movers always have the advantage, uh, okay. especially in the marketplace. But I mean, let's be honest. I mean, you know, as as uh, as as the medical system, the sick care, illness medicine, whatever you want to call it, allopathic, as it continues to collapse. And believe me, it will. Uh, you know, guys like you, companies like yours are going to benefit because again, it's about taking ownership of people's personal health. And you know, what what can provide better awareness than somebody that, you know, is allowing you guys to have like a live look into, you know, their metabolic, I mean, really just everything that's happening from a metabolic standpoint and how they process food. Cause I mean, food is the greatest medicine that any of us can take. And if we, you know, can optimize the food that's coming into our mouths, we're going to definitely clean up our act from a metabolic and of course, life extension standpoint. 100%. Couldn't agree more. And I think, you know, we are diet agnostic, so we're going to work with whatever your body says. And I think that's important too, is don't follow. If anyone tells you they have one right way that you should be eating, you should Run ask away. questions because yeah. there's no one right way. And I think your body is going to tell you more than any website ever could. So Beautiful. that's what we're here to do. Probably, thank, thank you so much for coming on the show today. So guys, support the amazing people that come on the Jay Campbell podcast. Go to their website. It's www.nutrisense.io. And you can follow them also on Instagram. It's Carly O. Hayes. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.